Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to ReactJS uh, tutorial. Today we are going to use React Select. Recently I have a lot of hands on experience with React Select and we will use today the async version of this React Select so that we can query. Uh, into react select control and the data will be populated by calling a backend web API so let's get started uh, I have a project template from react.js <clears throat> nothing has changed this this is how the default template of react.js looks so let's uh, first install <coughs> that into this project and we will going to do this just by npm install command <coughs> okay uh, let me start npm install react there's select and before that let me just close the server okay it will take uh, some time to install that package <coughs> So guys this is the running and working example of how to use react select and it's uh, basically react select async uh, functionality where you need to query into drop down and the an api will be called to query into your backend and the values will be get from there uh, and you will process that response and you will prepare your temporary array uh, based on that response and you will assign that array in a callback and uh, this callback will be consumed in uh, async select uh, control so let me just align this a bit so that it makes good it looks good so uh, this was the default template I just changed a bit so that we have shown the drawdown selector I just removed uh, extra thing from header and I just uh, created another, another class with the select example name and this example just have a async select and you can see this uh, component is called inside the main app component and it looks like this you have a thin header and this multi select uh, sorry uh, async select and if you query inside this like um, you as soon as you press you and uh, the fetch data um, function is called and th this uh, method takes two arguments first is the input that we write inside this uh, 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 select selector and second parameter is the callback which is by default uh, coming from the that control and if we continue uh, then you can see it has one record matching with you if you see the network call then this is the network call you can see api slash values slash point user slash u and if you see the response it it brings only one user if i search a then you can see we have all three options from backend and if you can validate our network api call you can see we have uh, three records coming from uh, backend api and these three are shown here and uh, the else is the default uh, behavior of this control uh, just quickly let's uh, review and go through this code i will uh, do a separate uh, session on this in the, on the tutorial on how to use async select but this is just for uh, consuming that package and you can see this code that uh, we have 
this property do we need suggestions <coughs> nope sorry let me remove this suggestion thing do we need this nope we just need a select option property which will bring us a uh, an object that we will select from this drop down on click so basically inside this uh, on change function we are selecting this option and the rest will be controlled by uh, this control itself so that's it you can see this code very clearly let me zoom in if I could control yeah like this okay so uh, we just have used react component and async select we have only one property inside state we have write a fetch data function which is an arrow function which has been used by load option props of async select basically as soon as we write or press any key inside this control that uh, function is called automatically and the input is placed inside first uh, uh, argument and a callback is attached with this arrow function and this callback is just for to bring data back to that control which we return in inside uh, this function which will we will have back from api and we will pass that data to back to this function basically in here we are just changing the shape of data we get from here from our api you can have the same format directly from your backend api so in that case you don't uh, you will not need this work you will pass this data directly to callback function so that that's it i will uh, push that code and will uh, add the git hub link in the description you can uh, just reuse this code so that's it uh, till then bye bye and don't uh, forget to sub subscribe this channel and also click the bell icon so that you will get the all our findings timely and in case of any uh, help you can just ask in the comment section so have a good day bye bye